child of God, amid all the uncertainty, calamity, chaos, and foolishness that is ongoing in the United States of America, how are you doing, black man? How are you doing, black woman? as we witness tyranny, violence, and war in the streets, in the destruction, and the continued oppression and suppression of black lives in this country. How are you doing, child of God, as you ponder upon and try to find hope and refuge in a country that seems to have no place of solace or peace for any of God's disenfranchised or oppressed or disinherited? How are you doing? child of God. I admonish you somehow, some way to find joy, find peace, find hope, find a place of refuge and solace, even in a place of utter chaos. I greet you in the name of Jesus tonight. As we in the Proctor Conference have been summoned to a week of prayer, as we approach the November 3rd election, under the banner of holy rage, holy hope, we are summoning God's creation, God's children, to be more attuned to God's voice as we approach one of the most pivotal elections in our nation's history. May the words of Amos guide us as we prepare to go forward tonight. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. For all of us should know that we are living in unprecedented times and in the midst of everything that we're facing as it relates to COVID-19, as it relates to this election, we've been given an obligation. It's an obligation that for African-Americans should not be taken lightly, seeing that for so long we were withheld the opportunity of performing this task called voting. It's an obligation. It's an obligation to our ancestors that died trying to get this opportunity. It's an obligation that not only affects our present, but most importantly, it affects our posterity, our future. So as we pray for our nation during this election season, brothers and sisters, let's pray that people understand that this is a duty that must be carried out and the difference we can make in just performing this duty. Let's go to God in prayer. Kind God, we come in Jesus' name thanking you for this priceless and precious privilege to pray. For we know how important it is to be able to communicate with a God who can hear us and see us. As we pray today, we're praying for this nation. We're praying for this country. We're praying for our cities and our communities as citizens gather to go out and exercise their right to vote. We're praying for this nation, oh God, that in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of unrest, in the midst of a pandemic, we're praying today because we know that we need you. We need your presence. We need your power. Today, we pray for a nation that has been gripped for so long with the chilly hands of injustice, has been gripped with the chilly hands of inequality, has been gripped with the chilly hands of inequity. And so, God, we pray that that chilly hand would be loosened. We pray, oh God, as the prophet Amos stated in Amos Five and 24, we're praying today that justice rolls down like waters and righteousness as an ever flowing stream. We're praying today against white supremacy. 
We're praying against bigotry. We're, we're praying against racism. We're, we're praying against those who cannot confront it and cannot challenge it and cannot combat it, but only can just per, can say, stand by and stand back. We're praying against that today. We're praying against all of the injustices, whether it rains in the political arena or even in the educational systems or even in the workplace. We're praying against that today. We're praying that you, oh God, would show yourself mighty and show yourself strong in this nation. And we're praying in the only name that matters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Sing it with me this time. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. Oh. You are important to me. I need you to survive. And the next part goes just like this. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth, I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You sing it. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my mouth, I love you. I need you to survive. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important unto me. I need you to survive. You are important to me i need you to survive god of hagar god of rahab god of deborah god to those who are full of righteous rage god to the hopeful and the hopeless alike god of the confused god to and of the exhausted god of the relentless god of the rebellious god of and to the revolution God, our God, we seek you. God of our ancestors, God in and of the sit-ins, God over bus boycotts, God and peaceful protests, God of the rowdy riots, God of the disruptors, that God, the God that taught us there would be no peace until the oppressed go free. God, we need you. They've exchanged chattel chains for police chains and 
voter rights acts for burning ballots, water hoses for rubber bullets. God, I am pressed to ask, where are you? God, like our ancestor upon the cross, I utter the words, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? Our spirits are grieved and weary. Our bodies hold the weight of oppression passed down from generation to generation like familial recipes. We are worn and we are weary. When we look upon this world, we have not much to hope for. In fact, what the enemy has meant for evil is doing just what it was intended. It's so vile, it has even set itself deep into the DNA of some of my skin folk. It's an evil you can't reason with. It's an evil that you can't appeal to. It's an evil some people can't wait to get over so they can put it on. How, oh God, do we, your faithful ones and oppressed, get by? When do we get to stop surviving and get to live and thrive? And maybe I'm just too weak and worn. Maybe in this moment I am full of hopelessness. And to be honest, this is the first time in a long time I've even wanted to seek you. But God, my God, where are you? Your daughters, your sons, your non-conforming genderless children are calling upon you for a shift. We've been singing and swinging for centuries. We've been cultivating, creating, and chanting as far back as our arrival. We've taken high roads. We've been the bigger persons. Where is our shift? This probably isn't the type of prayer anybody expected. See, this prayer is for those of us who just don't understand. We just don't get it. This is a prayer for those of us who are just tired, those of us who are just exhausted, those of us who can't, who aren't afraid to articulate that they are just frustrated with you, oh God. This prayer is for those of us who have questions and those questions need answers. I am everything my fallen ancestors fell for, but in, is this world what they intended for me to live in? So God, this is a prayer of demand. I demand a shift. I decree a shift. I'll call upon the God they told me was going to do it. So God, do just that. Do whatever it is. Seek out those of us who are so lost in our emptiness and him us back up into your arms, oh God. If we cannot feel anything else, fill us with your holy, righteous rage. Embolden us to flip over tables and challenge establishments. Come for status is quos. Call, call upon us to disrupt and dismantle and descend upon the evils that are committed to eradicating us. God, forge in us a new thing, a new rowdy, rebellious, unmanageable, ungovernable spirit with strategies, ideas, and policies that go beyond election cycle, vote or die campaigns. Give light and spaces to voices that are doing the work, your work. Teach us to dissenter Sis had patriarchal practices that keep the well-qualified, your children, your babies from our platforms. Remove the white supremacist evil we've indoctrinated and internalized in ourselves from our bones so we can be the church you called us to be. Restore our hope, O oh God. Restore our faith, O oh God. Renew us, O oh God. As we can continue to fight this fight, as we long for a time where we won't have to fight, where we will live to thrive, not just survive. God, I pray you bring us community. Community that doesn't turn each other away. Community that values us as you created us. I pray you give us moments of peace, moments of joy moments of normalcy to share amongst each other to pass down these quiet stories down to our own wildest dreams oh god my rock and my redeemer i pray my god that loves justice my god that will not forsake god's faithful ones for those of us who seek you oh god let our hearts revive in your name i pray i invoke the prayers of those before us forever and ever Amen and Ashe, Ashe and Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been enriched. I've been enabled. I've been reinvigorated and encouraged by the prayers and the songs rendered unto us this evening. I encourage you to support the work of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference by giving.
by going to Givelify and searching the Same Do It Proctor Conference or by visiting the Proctor Conference website at www.sdpconference.info slash invest dash contribute. I promise you, your contributions to this conference, this ministry, will benefit more than your eyes can see or your ears can hear. As we prepare to leave tonight, may our hearts and our minds be upon the people of the city of Philadelphia, especially West Philadelphia, as they witness the killing of Walter Wallace Jr. May it be summons to those who are continuing to battle the throngs and the lasting impressions of coronavirus in their immediate family and their surroundings. May it continue to be those who are unemployed and ravishing from poverty and hunger. May our hearts and minds continue to be upon our neighbors, that we would exhibit mercy, that we would exhibit love and be God's hands and feet in the earth. And may the words of Amos arrest and convict our hearts tonight as it declares, there will be wailing in all the streets and cries of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be summoned to weep and mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. This is holy rage. This is holy hope. That even amidst our despair and even amidst the uncertainty and destruction looming in our world, that we find hope, we find confidence and solution in the word and in the truth of who God is to us and who God has been for our ancestors. May you be encouraged tonight. May you be blessed. And may the peace of God be with you now and forever.